Hey, Old Hammerers, it's Brett from Solo Old Hammer Gaming. Um, I introduce myself differently from now on. I usually, everyone calls me Bubba, and every time I say Brett from Solo Old Hammer Gaming, I feel like I'm in friggin' trouble, so, yeah. I only ever get called Brett when um, I am in trouble. But what I'm going to do today is... I'm going to have a little go with the um, contrast paints because I've been using contrast paints for Beastmen, but I just want to see if it is actually um, quicker than painting like with like normal mediums. Um, see how it goes. Uh, I've got the AirPods in as my microphone for this this one, so hopefully it's not all muffled and crap. And where that painting thing is. That's where the camera's focused in on, so hopefully I won't have to worry about having it out of focus and all that crap. So, but, so we're going to go in with Gillum and Flesh first. So this is one minute and fifteen seconds into the into the um, the deal, and we'll whack it in. And yeah, that's also give me an opportunity just to see if um, this style of painting is um, it could be considered old hammerish um, yeah let's just um, see if it is any quicker because I found myself um, actually worried about where I was hitting with um, the dark, especially the darker colours, uh, so that I didn't have to go in again with the, um, oh, what's that bloody colour called? Wraithbone or whatever it's called. That's what I undercoated this mob in. Um, so, yeah, just see how that goes. Um, this gives me a chance, too, to thank all my subscribers, all 152. Thank you very much. Climbing that old Hammer Mountain, getting there. But um, still a ways to go, and hopefully, if this proves all right, then I'll be able to do a few more painting videos. I'll definitely want to do one on some more orcs and goblins and things. Um, God, you can't see it at the moment, but there's a ton of stuff on the table to, to be done. Um, for instance, like, um, oh, some orcs, um, some more archers to do, um, a couple of orc mach war machines, and, um, yeah, just tons of stuff, tons of stuff still to do. But, um, so I'm just going in with Gilliman Flesh first for all the... The fleshy parts of the beastman, just slapping it on. Um, yeah, just trying to get it done as as quick as I can, as neat as I can. But yeah, I just want to see if it's um actually quicker. So I have to admit though, I do I do like Gollum and Fresh the way that it, that it um paints up the the skin tones of the beastman. I haven't used it for um, any other races yet, like humans or anybody like that, but yeah, that'll be something to look at in the future. It's just that different um, undercoat that throws me off. Um, yeah, I used to, well, when I first started out, I used to undercoat with white, so light undercoats are nothing new for me, but... Um, then I moved on to a black one, I think, after reading the Mike McVeigh article ooh, back in the day um, about how he was using black undercoats for, for some things and then, yeah, it just sort of turned into black undercoats for everything for me. So that's the, that's the way you do it. But I have been um, actually thinking about getting rid of all my, my paints and resetting up exclusively with um, coat to arms the the old old formulas but um, I didn't do it for these guys because I started out 
doing um because i always wanted to try con contrast see what it was like um seems that the hype was as big as everyone was making out so let's just see if it's actually quicker because um yeah i don't know i do knew so we'll see but there we go there's the skin on so that was about four minutes of skinnish skinning what was i say not um having a fiddle or mixing a cup of tea i'm just cleaning my brush all right so the next one to go on will be the saigal brown this is for all the um all the fur parts of the beastmen there's plenty of them i'll give you the tip I find that um, I had I do find that uh, darker colours on top of lighter colours you don't have to to re recoat or whatever they say with the wraith bone because it co it's, it covers the the lighter colour that you're using like the Gilliman flesh will get covered by the um, by the Saigal brown every time so. I don't mind the cycle brown, it's not a bad colour actually, it covers pretty well. Um, yeah, I just, I just don't know if it's, um, if it's still old hammer. Well, I suppose everything can be old hammer, but does it give you that, that old hammer feel? I don't know. I suppose it remains to be seen when the whole army itself is, is um, painted up. Um, still plugging away at them. Uh, just a little bit there, so we'll just make that brown. Brown doesn't matter. And a bit, always that annoying little bit just here around the, around the stomach. Yeah, just a little bit on his chest. This little goatee thingy. Probably should have let that dry a little bit, but uh, dumb via disco as we live, we learn. Yeah, some more fur. Oh. I feel like a um, dog groomer doing these guys, making sure all the um, The fur is done properly, and I don't miss anything. Now, these haven't got haven't had a chance to dry yet before I'm coming in with the next coat. I'm just going to do one coat because that's what it says on the box. One coat and you're done. But. Yeah, whether it's old hammerish or not. Um, yeah, that, re that remains to be um, to be seen. I'm not um, getting any excess off my palette or anything. I'm just slapping it on. Now you could go use these as as a base coat and then um, smash them out with some more. Um, some like highlights and things like that but I'm not going to do that I just want to get them painted to a decent level so that way I can um, get another battle report out because that's what it's all about playing games of Warhammer 3rd edition the king of editions the absolute king of editions I don't mind sixth, and I don't mind watching sixth battle reports, but yeah, third edition is king. Probably those that disagree with that, but hey, <laughs> that's what we're all here for: discussions, discussions on yeah, 
what edition is best and everyone's got their own idea of that uh, just the bottom of the legs now to hit I do find that um, when you just slap it on it um, covers heaps better than and taking your time and all that jazz so so we're now about 10 minutes into the video and it's nearly half done so hmm. I don't know is it because I haven't because I've only just started using this medium or if I miss anything, then I'll just put some more fur there. Who cares? Just to get them on the table. But once I get this guy done, I've only got um, what, two, three, four, plus another five that are half done. They've got the skin colour on them already. Um, I didn't do any painting last night i did during the day got some skin colors on them um up to the banner bearer as well so but here comes a plastic banner and that sucks um i'm gonna actually try painting something on that on the plastic banners i don't know do people prefer plastic banners or do you prefer the um making your own banner out of like paper well, i did a video a while ago about um how i use cigarette cigarette bat, like paper for my banners naughty naughty um didn't say you should go out and puff a packet so you could get the paper but um yeah pretty sure you can hear that just cleaning my brush all right so that's that one done and that's 12 minutes in so it was about one minute of talking i suppose i think it was two minutes of talking so about 10 minutes right so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to use um contrast skeleton horde to just get the um like all the bones and the wrappings and things like that done um, This is a good colour, I actually like this colour. It's handy for heaps of stuff. But we need a little thicker than that. It just about covers up. Give them the flesh. So. It is a lighter colour, but yeah, we get that transition from one thing to the next. So there it goes. Get in there. Get it all up in there. Oh, missed a bit at the back. Hey, I moved me um palette like a twit because that palette is telling me where the camera is focused in on. So if I um. Uh, Keep the, the mini above that um, thing, it should be in shot. Well, that's the theory anyway. So, whether that theory holds true or not, I don't know. But, it remains to be seen. There we go. Um, so, we'll do the wrappings on the the axe as well in um, this skeleton horn because it's not a bad color actually it looks like um aged wrappings or wrappings that haven't been looked after very well uh, dirty cloth and yeah what you'd expect policemen to have because um, I mean, let's face it they're not the sharpest tools in the, sh in the shed they're um yeah they've got their issues when it comes to got their issues definitely when it comes to intelligence checks there we go so that's that 
It's all the bits of bone that I want to do. Oh, just missed. Colour scheme there. There we go. Effective. Alright. Let's clean this brush now. Go back to the first brush. And the next thing I'm going to use is. Basilicum and Grey. That could be the next one. So, very, very few colours that I'm using for these guys just to. Get them done. I might change the. I'm definitely going to change the um, loin cloths for the next unit because um, these guys have all got purple. So I thought, oh, that's a good way to differentiate between the units. So as they as they get built up and everything, they will um, have different different cloths and stuff. Now, silicone and grey. I like I like this colour. This brush is still wet, but. Oh shit, I'm gonna put too much on me. Mm. Well, that could be a problem. Yeah, spread it out a bit. There we go. Spreading it out. Spreading it out. It's got no doubt. Now we've got to hit with some clout. It's very hard to actually um, think of things to talk about when um, I'm painting. Usually, I am um, sitting here listening to music, having it cranked out. Um, either like Eamon Amarth or you know, old school Metallica. Um, depends what I'm painting. I like to. I like to. When I was doing my old Norse Army, it was definitely Eamon Amarth all the way. But, um, I could be a medallion, who knows. But these, um, all these colours seem to blend in together really well too. So if you do, if you do miss something, just, yeah. It won't really be noticed. So, yeah, that's a bit better. What a dickhead. I've got to keep an eye on that, um, on this video screen thing. We will, uh, we will highlight that up with a little bit of um, like bronze or something. Okay, so that's some silicone and grey. Oh, hang on. No, that's alright. Because I'll do the hoops in black. Which is actually the next colour by coincidence. Our next colour is Black Templar. So, Black Templar's coming out. Whoop. There we go. So, Black Templar is probably one of the colours that I actually do like a lot in the uh, contrast range. Because it, um, it covers well, it highlights well. There's one white dot there that I just got to destroy. And another one, and another one. Um, our results different if you give it time to dry? Yes. Because um, you can see those bits that you've missed and then uh, go back over them with the with the colour that you're using. So I'm trying to just crack one out as quick as I can so I can see if it makes any difference. But um, yeah, whether it's old hammer or not, I don't know. Because um, well, you, you're not using those those classic colours like Goblin Green, Snake Bite Leather, um, Orc Skin, the classics, you know, but um, if it is getting painted quicker, then that's a good thing because then you get more stuff on the table. But I really missed his hand there. Holy moly, look at that! That's 
No good. Missed his, uh, missed his hand by a mile, far out. Must have been off in the own little world then. There's some black lines and strings and stuff. They just, yeah. as well. Now I haven't painted up the shields yet, I've undercoated them and everything, but on the other unit, stupidly, I um, glued the shields on straight away for some of them before I realised what I was doing. And I thought, you idiot, that would be um, heaps easier to paint if you didn't have all those shields and that in the way. So. It'll be interesting to see how they go for um, like flat surfaces like that because like with the Space Marines I do hear on the um, well word on the street is that the few people are not happy with the with the coverage of the um, the flat like power armor and stuff like that so but yeah that remains to be remains to be seen like. That side's not too bad, don't mind that. Um, that side's that side's not that side's a lot darker. This side here is um yeah. A lot lighter. It does look um okay, that's upsetting me, so I can be a bit of shadow bugger it because I'm not going back to another colour. Because yeah, this is about speed and getting it done, painting armies. Um so that, yeah, the one they look good, and two they're on the table. All right, I think that's all the black done. Hang on, there's a little dot there. There's a stinky dot there. There's a couple of stinky dots there. So he's going to have a few flecks of black in his um in his fur, which is um, no biggie, I reckon. Like our beast men, I haven't. Like buying a cat, I suppose, or a, uh, or a pig, or well, that darkens it up nice actually. Those black, black. And you're just picking it out every now and again on there. Gives it a little bit of um, oh, oh, look at that. Good old camera showed me right where I missed. Right in there. What I do for safari. Oh, can't really judge how good it is. <laughs> Only try and just crank them out, but you know, at least try to cover the cover the finger. Alright, so now <coughs> excuse me. The cloth for these guys will be a it's called a contrast contra contrast. Contrast Magos Purple. Let's have a look at this. Magos Purple. Fucking paint all over me now. I don't mind this colour. This colour would be nice for um, Jean Steelers, I reckon, for. Um, Space Hulk. Um, that's pretty cool. Happy with that. It's just loin clothy thing. Yeah, that symbol in the middle, that's um, that's special. That's gonna get a um, coat of Probably more ink or maybe hybrid purple. I'm not sure yet. I don't know. I'm gonna wax some more on that because um, there's a little bit of gooing and flesh there that's not covering, and just then it looked like that he'd had a little trip to Brown Town. Which they probably would, Beast Men, actually, because they're, um, yeah, they're not the, the cleanest creature. 
in the Warhammer world, I suppose. Cleaning the Norks? Hmm. Good question, not sure. There we go. There's the that all done. I'm happy. I really do like the way that the purple comes out. And that's a little bit tickle on the back of there as he's there's his trip to Brown Town. Where we saw a hail by deer or something from the mighty mighty empire or come up against um unit of berserk here from the mighty third edition Norse army which will be slowly painted and added in to my Norse army. But um yeah that's those bird berserk here. Oh. Good good unit. I've got um a few orcs on the table too. I've got a couple of them gotta fix their weapons up. Um, I want a lot of 18, uh, 19 it turned out to be the other day, so. Now this is wire flesh just on the um, Wraithbone undercoat, so it's a, it's from the, it's an old Citadel ink, a 19, 19 oldie one, ye oldie ink, like ye oldie bubba, because uh, I've got my birthday coming up soon. And I'm old as the hills. So, and that is that. So that was 26 minutes to do one, less, let's say, a minute and 50 at the start. So, hmm. Yeah. Is it old, Emma? I don't know. I'll leave that up to you, good people. Um, I think I will be. Completing this army and then uh, getting replacing slowly replacing all my inks with um, coat to arms so I can yeah I could definitely get some done quicker and it doesn't look crap you know like well, I think that looks okay it's good enough for tabletop gets the gets the unit on the table. Um, yeah, it does make them look like that they're highlighting and everything like that, but, um, yeah, is it as good as that layer layering system? I don't, I don't think contrast is. I prefer, um, yeah, I think I prefer the layering system. Even though it might take a little bit longer, I don't think the um, difference in time is actually that that um, that much. So, yeah, just yeah, that's my opinion. But um, hmm, interesting. But that's another one done at least. So happy with that, and uh, yeah, just thanks to all my subscribers. Um, thanks for watching and supporting the channel. Uh, 252 of you at today's count. Um, yeah, I'm actually really, really chuffed. I can't thank you guys enough for commenting and, yeah, for keeping up with the channel. And, yeah, it just makes it so, so much more fun. And still loving it. And it's an extra part of the hobby that I never thought I'd have. And, um, yeah, I really, really, really enjoy it, and um, I'm so happy you guys are uh, coming on this journey with me, and we'll get the word out about the King of Editions, 3rd Edition, out and about, show all those 6th Edition dudes how it was done <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> awesome. All right, other than that, uh, I hope everyone has a good day. I'm going to kick on with some, some more painting. I'll finish these five up. And then I um, might even undercoat the other ones, make a couple and undercoat them, um, the other 20 guys. So that way they're all done, ready to go, and I don't have to wait. And then, um, yeah, get these guys done, and then I can have another battle report. Now, I think it's going to be against the Norsemen. So um, I think the low leadership value of the the um, Beastmen would be too much of a... Uh, a, a bane against the undead because there'd be um, fear checks left, right, and center. And you know, I think their leadership seven, even the general. So, 
it's a bit sucky. So um, yeah, we'll kick on with that and it'll probably be the Norse so we can have a, a good battle at least hopefully. But uh, other than that, keep climbing that old hammer mountain. Thank you to all of my subscribers and uh, stay cool. Stay old hammer.